So when we come back to this line 29 onwards, it is leading to a kind of a situation where the leech gatherer has to be introduced. So we will go until then here. I heard the skylark wobbling in the sky and I be thought uh, me of a playful hair. See, there is a hair outside which runs races in the mist and produces mist to the sun's rays. And there is a playful hair within the mind of the poet and it also is uh, juxtaposed. Even such a happy child of earth am I. See, I am, am I. Even as these blissful creatures do I fare, I do really enjoy watching them. Far from the world I walk and uh, from all I care, uh, all care. But there, see this, this conjunction, if you observe this poem very closely, uh, one of the very profound feelings that you could see is while you observe these conjunctions, which often uh, you know, contradict or bring a kind of a different tone from the previous uh, notations made. But there may be, uh, there may come another day to me. What kind of a day could it be? Solitude, pain of heart, distress and poverty. Look at very strong feelings. All of them are of very different emotions and very profound background. Solic solitude is very personal. Pain in the heart is very personal. Distress is very personal. Poverty is personal. But solitude is from a background of a family. Pain of heart is from the background of emotions. Distress is a mental burden. Poverty. Most of us feel it is economic. But okay, let me ask you personally. Can poverty be only that of economic one? If you read the background, people may say that it is industrial England and uh, poverty was a part of the uh, blame game situations of the economic society and need not be necessarily of the 19th century. Even in the 21st century, the situation is indifferent. But is it just economic or any sort of poverty that anyone faces? So with that rhetorical question, I would uh, proceed to the uh, sixth stanza. My whole life, I have lived in pleasant thought. Now, uh, that, that gives, takes you, makes you feel nostalgic. Something happy about the past. My whole life, I have lived in pleasant thought. As if life's business were a summer's mood. See, summer's mood, summer, that season is very important in the European or, uh, or in the cold region. Well, in my place, it's all summer. We do not have a cold season at all. And we may not be able to really understand what, is, what the importance of summer is. So, to him, summer is a very pleasant thought. Even the thought itself is pleasant to him. So look at the adjective being used. As if all needful things would come unsought. Uh, you don't go for it. It comes automatically to you. To genial faith, it's a very celebrative one. Your faith is, uh, you know, wish is fulfilled. Still rich in genial good. We have a kind of a faith in the good that is going to come. <laughs> See, once again, with a contrasting conjunction. But how can he? I ask once again to you to observe the letter H capital in the word he. But how can he expect that others should build for him, saw for him, and at his call, love him, who for himself will take no heed at all. He is not concerned. See, there is one very tricky aspect here. Himself, the word H is not capital here. Is it that the poet playing a, a kind of a mischief game here by adding the letter H capital in the beginning and not 
in the later part or is this pronoun referring to something or some some people someone else rather than he as a capital letter in the beginning is a topic that we have to discuss uh, in in depth but please do make a note of it that would be quite comfortable for us to say so these three lines uh, which refers to the expectations what we do and what he does is having a lot of contrastive element we built for him we saw for him and uh, at his call love him who for himself will take no need no heed at all he doesn't take an interest on that i thought of chatterton the chatterton is a reference to say the text itself says about who it is a marvelous boy the sleepless soul kids usually don't sleep they have to be uh, made to sleep sometimes the mothers will find very tough time to make the child to sleep right this particular element of uh, you know sleeping is seen for a child it's full of activities jubilant thing chatterton is no different to that but unfortunately this chatterton perished in his pride pride is youth in his very young days how could god expect or how could he expect chatterton to finish his journey of life at a very young age is it is it fair from his side of him who walked in glory and in joy following his plow whatever the mild yoke played on his uh, neck he's been carrying it quite comfortably for a long time but why has his journey come to a, an abrupt ending along the mountain side see these are the things that lead to melancholy in the poetry poet's mind there are some very grave elements here need to be observed by our own spirits are we defined we are defined by our own spirits we poets now this is a very crucial point we poets in our youth begin in gladness but thereof come in the end despondency and madness so the poets also begin with gladness in the beginning of the youth but when they are yet to conclude there is a sense of despondency and madness this is a natural process but if you look at chatterton for that matter he did not have a chance to view his own despondency and madness and which is also very important as an emotion now so in such a note line 50 starts the eighth stanza now Uh, whether it will be peculiar grace a leading from above a something given yet it befell that in this lonely place when i with these un- untoward thoughts had striven see this is very important the untoward thoughts all these melancholic burdening thoughts that he had striven beside a pool so now in this particular Uh, emotional background in this kind of uh, ecological background in this kind of a nature in this kind of a setup i saw a man before me unaware the oldest man he seemed that ever wore gray hairs so in this kind of a setup of the speaker of the background i saw a man in very sure about the gender though he doesn't know the recognize the person the gender is recognized uh, anywhere the oldest man he seemed that ever wore gray hairs gray hair is a representative of old age and that is also indicative of the statement that he is the oldest man he had ever seen in his life now this introduces to the leech gatherer and we shall discuss the leech gatherer about the leech gatherer from here onwards so what did we learn we learned about the background we learned about the background of the poet we learned about the environment we learned about the setup from where or or the we can say it's a kind of a framework wherein this protagonist is positioned 
So may we meet next time. Thank you.